For generations, the root of many problems for women could be traced to their education. Feminists recognized that the educational system had been failing girls. Title IX was passed in 1972. It was one of the early victories of the women's movement. Many people think Title IX was only about sports. It went much further. Title IX provides equal educational opportunity for boys and girls in our schools. And it prevents discrimination, which is generally discrimination against girls. Michigan's Project on Equal Education Rights, the Peer Project, worked with parents, educators, and community members on the implementation of Title IX. During the Millikan and Blanchard administrations, their work opened up educational opportunities in all fields for women and girls. A lot of people just have no idea how much work has been put into the idea of equal education for boys and girls. Although much of their gains were rolled back while John Engler was governor, Governor Granholm has initiated efforts to reinstate equal educational opportunities for girls and women. While feminists were addressing educational disparities, they were also looking at inequality in the workplace. There were many jobs in the past that women could not um, attain because of societal uh, issues or pressures that kept them out of that. This was clearly spelled out in the one ads. One of the things that people don't realize today is during the 70s and 80s, the primary source for information about jobs was the line ads, the classified section of the newspaper. What would happen is they were classified by gender. But none of the, the good paying jobs ended up under female help wanted. They were all under the male. Help wanted female meant bookkeeper, secretary, social worker, librarian, teacher. That was it. That was all that was there. The National Organization for Women lobbied and, and confronted newspapers who had their ads segregated into help wanted female, help wanted male. One day on my lunch hour, I thought, I had 20 minutes. I'll just make a couple of phone calls. I talked to the, I think it was the publisher of the Oakland Press. And I went into my little spiel that I was going to give him how things were not fair and how I wanted him to change things and, and change the column headings. And after I'm through talking up about five minutes, I'm talking and he's just holding the phone. So he said, OK. I said, pardon me? What was that? He said, OK. I said, it was that easy? He said, nobody ever asked me before. Many other things had to change for women. Members of the Employment Committee of the National Organization for Women in Detroit decided to form new options personnel. The large corporations were looking for women at that time, because 1973 was the beginning of affirmative action. That was the executive order. And it differentiated from the civil rights movement that meant that any company who had a federal contract had to show good faith in hiring women and minorities. There were hardly any women who were engineers, although there were women who were educated to be engineers. And the big three gave us job orders. They wanted numbers. They wanted quotas. That's what corporations do. That's how they deal. They deal very well with numbers. There was also a push to find jobs for women in a wide range of places where women had never worked. We had a, a woman that was the very first woman who ever was in the paint area of Cadillac Motor Company. We had um, women who learned to be truck drivers. And these women who were five feet four, who were driving semis, women were in all different kinds of, of industrial plants because that's where the jobs were. And that's when we got lower down in the organization talking to personnel. And although the managers and the CEOs and everything realized they had to have women, the people that worked to execute that resisted us at every turn. Women sometimes had to take their employers to court to secure their rights. 
One major case involved Michigan Bell. One day, one of the engineers came and said that he knew one or two of the offices where they had men doing the job, and the men were being paid considerably more than we were. Legally, employers aren't allowed to simply change the title of a job in order to pay men more. But this was standard operating procedure at the time. I had gone to the National Organization for Women. I'd gone to a couple meetings, which got the fires going a little bit as to whether I was going to pursue this or not. Several other women joined in the case. They went to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, in 1973. They made the determination that yes, we were right. And in our <laughs> silly belief, we thought EEOC would help us. Well, they waited about another year or so after they made the determination that we were correct. And then they said, well, we're not going to do anything for you, but if you would like to, we'll give you a letter that says you now have the right to sue. They turned to one of the growing number of women attorneys. I contacted the legal counsel for the Detroit chapter of NOW, and she recommended an attorney for us. Jessica Cooper, who is now a judge, told us it would take a while for the lawsuit to, go, to be completed. In our imagination, we thought, six months, we're sure that's all that it's going to take. We'll be sitting there with better pay. We'll, we'll have everything the way we want it to be. It took a lot longer to settle, and because it became a class action suit, the number of people involved grew. Finally, the chief judge in federal court decided the case had gone on long enough. The day that we all came in there, he stood, stood up by, by his bench, and he went like this to the attorneys, and they all went into his, his chambers. And what he told them was, go out there and settle this case today. After 11 and a half years, the 13 women in the class action suit were offered two and a half million dollars. They were advised to take it or Michigan Bell would postpone and postpone as long as they could. They might never see any money. They decided to settle. They had accomplished something even more important to them than winning the lawsuit. We changed the way the company looked at women. We changed their opportunities. And we, we, that, that was important because when you figure a company like Michigan Bell that probably had about 60% of their employees were women, uh, they weren't really being fair. I thought that was good. I felt I did my part. 